Good afternoon, I'm Michael Warren. Coming up tonight on News 99. A cause has been determined for the fire that destroyed over 30 businesses in Seaside Heights. Find out what authorities are saying started the blaze next. And service dogs make life a little easier for people with disabilities, but some are abusing the service dog name. Find out what they're doing coming up. That's what's coming up in the next half hour. News 99 starts right now. This is News 99, coverage as local as it gets. Thanks for tuning in to News 99. I'm Katherine Weibel, along with Michael Warren. Tonight we start with a look at local headlines. The city of Harrisburg has made a huge move to erase nearly $345 million of debt. The city council has voted 6 to 1 in favor of the sale of the incinerator to Lancaster County Solid Waste Management. Residents hoped the council members would delay the voting and reevaluate the plan which calls for taxpayers to pay higher rates. The sale has already been approved by the Harrisburg Authority. A full recovery plan for the city goes before the Commonwealth Court for approval tomorrow. Once Harrisburg is rid of their debt, a new report says Lancaster County will soon have the highest debt per person of any municipality in Pennsylvania. Mayor Rick Gray believes otherwise. Gray believes the city's debt has been incorrectly lumped together. He says many factors are self-liquidating and do not affect the city's overall debt. According to Gray, a budget last year produced a $2 million surplus, and the city has just about $12 million in reserves. A Perry County man has died of carbon monoxide poisoning during a fire in Penn Township early Saturday. An autopsy identified the man as 52-year-old John Seeger, Jr. Emergency responders found Seeger in his bedroom, and he was pronounced dead at the scene. The death was ruled an accident. Neighbors surrounding the duplex were able to escape unharmed. State police continue to investigate the cause of the fire. Two people are dead following a fire in Newmanstown on Tuesday. The fire was discovered around 1.30 a.m. in a home on the 100 block of North Sheridan Road. Officials say a man and a woman in their 60s died in the blaze. Local and state police fire marshals are investigating the cause. A Lancaster County company is receiving national attention for the creation of a new product. NeverWet is a two-step system which creates an invisible barrier that repels water. The NeverWet system has led to a marketing agreement with the national brand Rust-Oleum. While there are a few drawbacks, this product has received mostly positive attention. A black cat is feeling lucky after being shot with a hunting arrow. The cat was found with the arrow lodged in his shoulder along his rib cage and part of it coming out of his back. The cat had no collar on and was taken to the SPCA for medical attention. SPCA workers believe the act was intentional. Anyone who has any information about this incident is asked to call the Lancaster County SPCA. The U.S. Army and National Guards of Colorado and Wyoming are diligently working to rescue people stranded by the dangerous floodwaters. Many have been rescued, but hundreds are still waiting for help to arrive. Mark Stewart has details on the rescue. This mighty medal takes to the sky on a life-saving mission to rescue the hundreds of people and their pets stranded in the epic Colorado floods. It's one of the most gratifying things you'll ever do is help out on U.S. soil. The choppers here are taking part in the largest airlift since Hurricane Katrina. People crying, leaving their home behind. Courtney Gilliam was rescued from Pinewood Springs along with her husband Sean and their two dogs. They've been stuck since Wednesday night. Feels a lot different than flying in a, uh, you know, commercial airline. Quite impressive just to see how the community worked together to share food, uh, other resources and uh, communication and just making sure everybody's okay. Yet some people didn't take the 15-minute flight. My husband does have the heavy-duty equipment. Reggie Liesveld's husband chose to stay behind. You know, help with the situation that go that's going on. As the people here wait to see their family and friends, there is anxiety about what's next, appreciation for the efforts on the ground, and anticipation for a homecoming soon. We'll definitely be back. 
For many drivers, it's their most precious cargo. But there's more to keeping child passengers safe than simply purchasing a car seat. Karen Kaifa has tips in this week's Consumer Watch. With so many options, navigating the market for a child's car seat can be confusing. Safety advocates recommend some simple questions before traveling with little ones on board. Check to make sure you're doing everything right. Is the seat in the right direction, in the right place? Is it the right seat for your child? Do you have the harnesses correct? After a purchase, parents and caregivers can seek the help of a certified technician to make sure it's installed in the car correctly. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has a car seat inspection station locator on its website. Hand-me-downs may save money, but an out-of-date car seat may put children at risk. The other thing that most parents may not realize is that car seats expire. There's a certain lifetime to a car seat, so don't be afraid to check for an expiration date on your car seat and know that if it's been around for a while, it might very well likely be an expired car seat. Those expiration dates can be found on the seat. And after children are out of car seats and booster seats, parents can continue to keep them safe by setting a good example. Our kids will do what they see us do as parents. So parents, if you're not buckling up, it's going to be really hard to keep your child buckled up. So everybody buckle up every ride every time. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. A suspect's daring jump to freedom leaves him flat on the pavement behind bars. Shelby Costo has the details. Watch as 42-year-old suspect Eric Simmons reaches his arm out of the cruiser window, unlocks the door, and out he goes, tumbling out onto the street. Officers quickly take him into custody and handcuff him. Get out of the wind, dude. Knock it off. Officers were traveling about 15 to 20 miles per hour when Simmons dove out of the car. He was supposed to be in handcuffs. The window should not have been down. Dayton Police Assistant Chief Bob Shabali says Simmons was picked up by officers on North Main. He was wanted for burglary after being accused of breaking into a home on Lindale on August 27th. When he was placed into the cruiser, veteran officer Adam Sharp and new officer Douglas Grisham failed to put handcuffs on Simmons while transporting him to the police department. They also left the back window down. Obviously there are some clear violations that the uh, officers are involved in, so we're reviewing all the video information, additional information, and there will be discipline uh, generated out of this. Assistant Chief Shivali says suspects should always be handcuffed when being transported. The only time people are not handcuffed is if they are a witness to a crime or just being taken in for questioning. Simmons was considered a dangerous suspect with a criminal past. Just two days before his arrest, officers sprinted into the scene of a burglary with guns drawn on Lindale. Police say Simmons took off from that scene in a pickup. As he drove away, he reached under the seat. The officer thought he was reaching for a weapon and fired a shot. Simmons was never hit and got away that time. But his luck ran out the early morning of August 29th when his foiled plan to escape came to a rolling end. In Dayton, I'm Shelby Costo for ABC 22 News. What a story. Coming up after the break, New Jersey officials have determined the cause of the devastating fire in Seaside Heights. Stay tuned. You are watching News 99. 91.7 FM WIXQ, Millersville's number one music source. The university's student-run radio station. Tune in daily to hear a variety of music beyond the top 40s. Want to be a DJ? All majors are welcome. Email operationsmanager at wixq.com for more information. Visit us online at wixq.com. 91.7 FM, WIXQ, your number one music source. saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. 
The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. This is Mike. This is where he's sleeping tonight. That's his pillow. He could have been upstairs using Jen's pillow if he would have stuck to just drinking that six pack. But boys will be boys. And one six pack turns into two. And then that turns into shots. And before you know it, you've an empty bottle of vodka and a full toilet bowl. <laughs> New details have emerged about the former Navy reservist who murdered a dozen people at the Washington Navy Yard on Monday. Sources say 34-year-old Aaron Alexis had been hearing voices and was being treated for mental problems weeks before his shooting rampage. Alexis had reportedly been suffering serious mental problems, including paranoia and a sleep disorder. The motive for his attack is still unknown. A cause has been determined for the massive boardwalk fire that roared through a seaside boardwalk last week. Sources say the fire began accidentally when corroded wires were touched by seawater and sand. The wires were said to have been damaged by Superstorm Sandy last October. More than 50 businesses were destroyed by the massive fire. Governor Chris Christie's administration reports a portion of the Sandy recovery money will be used to rebuild the burned businesses. Former Penn State assistant football coach Sarah, rather Jerry Sandusky was back in court yesterday as he seeks to have his child molestation conviction overturned. The former defensive coordinator argued Sandusky's lawyers did not have enough time to prepare. Sandusky also believes the jurors should have been told how long it took the victims to report the abuse. Sandusky is currently serving a 30 to 60 year state prison sentence after being convicted last year of 45 counts of child sexual abuse. He is not expected to attend the oral argument session. A man has been arrested for tossing firecrackers over a fence near the White House on Monday. Sources say what sounded like two gunshots were heard outside the White House. The man was tackled by a Secret Service officer and immediately arrested. The suspect was a white middle-aged man with dark hair, a blue shirt, and white shorts. This incident occurred just hours after the shooting rampage inside the Washington Navy Yard. After nearly two years, the Costa Concordia cruise ship has been pulled completely upright. The ship crashed into a reef of Giglio Island on January 13th of last year and killed 32 people. The ship was pulled into place after a 19-hour operation. The operation was deemed a success, and no environmental spills have been detected so far. The ship is expected to be floated away from the site in the spring and turned into scrap. Would you want your iPhone to have a fingerprint scanner? Apple announced that it will soon be a reality. Many people are skeptical of the new security feature, and Margaret Conley has all the answers. Touch ID sensor quickly reads your fingerprint and automatically unlocks your phone. You can even use it to authorize purchases through our stores. But is fingerprinting safe from hackers and the growing risk of identity theft? Hollywood movies like National Treasure make lifting prints look easy. Security researcher Mark Rogers warns that it depends on how the software giant implements the technology. Apple clearly has thought about this because the data is not going to be stored in the cloud, so there isn't going to be a giant database of lots of people's sensitive information that will be a prized target of hackers or um, enemy state actors. He says fingerprinting is convenient for users and will be a boost to the mobile industry. It could open up a really huge universe of opportunities. New biotech mapping opportunities are already in the making. Vascular technology uses infrared light to reflect patterns of blood vessels. 
and iris recognition developed by companies like MorphoTrust. So the, the goggles will go ahead and automatically look at the irises. Eye mapping is said to be faster and more accurate. You have fingers that are one in like 64 um, billion, and an iris's accuracy is you have um, one in, in, in about one trillion. Margaret Conley, CNN, New York. After the break, the Millersville University Communications Department has some new additions to their building. We'll tell you what they are coming up next. Downtown Lancaster is your creativity destination. Something new awaits you with every visit. Sit down and let your imagination decorate your own piece of pottery. Visitors can select from over 250 plus combinations of pottery and paints. If you're looking for a quick gift, string your own necklace for that personal flair or design a bracelet or a pair of earrings at the beading studio. The Beadworks and Pottery Works in Lancaster. Creativity for everyone, activities for all ages. Well, that does it for this edition of News 99. Coming up next on MTV, our new hit show, The Vibe, followed by In the Zone with a sneak peek into Donovan McNabb's season. Um, he just said MTV, not MUTV. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I'm just getting warmed up. All right, let's do it again from the top. In five, four, three, two, one. Well, that'll do it for this edition of News 99. Coming up next on MTVU, oh our new hit show, The Vibe, followed by... Oh, my God. What happened? MTVU? What happened? Are you serious? MTVU. Oh. Are we'll do it from the top again. I, again? I'm getting warmed up. Uh, he said MTVU, not MUTV. And Bobby? We're just going to have Matt do this one, okay? Yeah, I, I'm just going to do it. All right, just... This, are you good? Go ahead. Go all ahead. Right, all, right. <coughs> all right. From the top, one more time. Matt, you're closing it. In five, four, three, two, one. That does it for this edition of News 99. Coming up next on MUTV, our new hit show, The Vibe, and In the Zone with a sneak peek of Donovan McNabb. <laughs> are you serious? All you have to do is sit there and look pretty as I talk. That's all. If you can't do your job, I'm fine with that. But seriously, just just sit there. Quiet. Don't, uh, no, no. No. That's all you have to do. Quiet as I talk. Uh, I can, can you do your job correctly? I, I, we can do it. Just just we sit can, there we, as I talk. We got this. All right. All right. Are we, are we going to do this again? All right. From the top again. In five, four, three, two, one. All right. That does it for this installment of News 99. Coming up next on MUTV, our new hit show, The Vibe, and the. And bleh, 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 bleh. What are you doing? Well, I'm out of ink, I'm out of paper. Plus the library was closed, so now I gotta write my term paper by hand. You're a moron, dude. You should've went to Cartridge World of Centerville. They have all the ink, toner, and paper you need, even at prices college students can afford. So you don't have to write your term paper with sticky notes. What? Save 10% with your Millersville ID at Cartridge World, the world's leader in ink and toner refill. experiencing seasonal allergies? Want to know how to combat them? Our own Tyler Ridge has more on how to deal with allergies. With the fall weather fast approaching, seasonal allergies or hay fever are sure to come alongside the cooling temperatures. About one in five Americans suffer from seasonal allergies and these allergies are estimated to cost Americans over eight billion dollars annually. Usually allergy symptoms include a runny nose, scratchy eyes, and at times uncontrollable sneezing. There are a few ways to help control these symptoms. Rinse the pollen out of your hair daily before going to bed. The pollen can get trapped in your hair, especially if you use any type of hair product. Although it may be hard for college students, keep your stress levels low. Dr. Clifford Bassett says high stress levels raise the level of cortisol in your system and may lead to an amped up allergic response. There are also many over-the-counter medications that can help control your seasonal allergy symptoms, such as 10 milligrams of Zyrtec once a day. If pills aren't your thing, you could also try using a nasal spray. To find a daily allergy forecast, you can visit Allegra.com slash pollen forecaster. And for more information about seasonal allergies, visit the Health Center on campus. For Millersville University, I'm Tyler Rich. 
The intramural program is a popular extracurricular for many Millersville students. Our own Derek Bob has more about this program and new changes that are being introduced this semester. If you're looking for a great way to meet new people, have some fun, and all the while stay physically fit, then the intramural department here at Millersville is exactly what you need. With many sports available to the population, the students have their choice of what they want to partake in. Junior Tim Purcell is one of the acting supervisors of the intramural department. He had this to say about the goals of the program. The main goal of the department uh, from when it started and then we're continuing on now um, is just the fact that we're here for the students and we're always here for the students. Uh, any um, thing that they want, we try to do for them. Purcell also tells us how many sports the department offers and which are the students' favorites. Uh, we approximately run about 16. That includes the leagues, the drop-in tournaments, and then the tournaments. Uh, I would say it's a mix between the two, uh, basketball or football. Uh, our numbers for that are both pretty high. Aside from the students having fun, the intramural staff seems to be enjoying the games also. Uh, the most fun part is just the overall um, love that we have for sports and being able to watch it and uh, see the love that other people have for the sports and the appreciation that they have for uh, you know us running the, running the games. With two new sports being added to the intramural program, with Battleship and Capture the Flag being held across the campus, the whole outlook on this program is very optimistic according to many of the supervisors working for the intramural department. With Millersville University, I'm Derek Bob. If you've been in Basler lately, you may have noticed some interesting new changes. Joey Bertoni has the details on what was added this summer. We're here at Basler Hall where there are a few new changes to the broadcasting department besides programs. Whisper rooms have been installed in an addition to remodeling of the previous audio and video editing rooms. As of last year, there were only two audio editing rooms, but this year there are now four of them, with the addition of two brand new whisper rooms that are currently residing in what once was the audio classroom in Bassler Hall. We met up with John Deal, who helped set them up this past summer. The audio rooms, we have included whisper rooms, which um, allow for better recording and um, less outside noise we get inside for allowing for better sound recording. They can develop higher quality sounds. Um, they can learn AVID, be more prepared for the professional fields. Besides the whisper rooms, new programs have been installed into each audio and video editing room as well. We have included um, AVID into the editing rooms. Also included a cloud storage room or cloud storage on the internet where you can access files off and on the cloud. And um, that makes everyone's life a lot easier, especially when they revolve around AVID. If any communication major would like to use any of the editing rooms, they can go to the CER to reserve a room for any of their projects. Reporting from Millersville University, I'm Joey Bertoni. Well, I don't know about you, Catherine, but I certainly can't wait to use some of that new equipment. Coming up next, people are misusing the right to have a service dog. Find out how this is affecting people in need. We'll be right back. The Snapper, home on the latest local news, sports, and entertainment. There's something for everyone. Under completely new management, the Snapper is back on track, run entirely by our student staff. Interested in being a writer? Applications can be sent to thesnapper.com forward slash apply. Join us in Hash 161 every Thursday at 9 p.m. And don't forget to pick up your copy of The Snapper every Thursday. The Snapper, Millersville University's student newspaper since 1925. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. So wait, you want to do the news at 6 o'clock now? No. 6 o'clock is dinner time. You can just eat at 5.30. No, 6 o'clock is dinner time. Hey, Rory. Yep? What time is dinner time? 6 o'clock. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships 
At the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. Ernie Els encourages you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. For authentic Italian dining, go to Nino's Pizzeria. Nino's menu includes pizza, wings, stromboli, subs, and Italian dinners. Stop by from 10 to 2 on weekdays for the lunch special. Nino's Pizzeria, 11 Manor Ave, Millersville. A professional eater claims another prize, and walking on water? The video that will have you talking is coming up in Take a Look at This. Take a look at this, not for those that suffer from acrophobia. This 23-year-old Austrian certainly doesn't appear to have a fear of heights. He scaled this nearly 900-foot tower in China Sunday without a safety rope. And if that wasn't enough of an extreme thrill, once he got to the top, he jumped off the tower with a parachute. Who doesn't like pie? Joey Chestnut certainly likes the stuff. In fact, the professional eater holds the new world record for eating pie. Chestnut downed 13 apple pies in just eight minutes at the Johnny Appleseed Festival in Ohio over the weekend. If you think you've seen Chestnut eat before, you have. He won his seventh consecutive Nathan's hot dog eating title this past 4th of July. Take a look at this, baseball fans. This Pittsburgh Pirates fan has an interesting way of showing his team spirit. He was riding high on a jetpack outside Three Rivers Stadium Sunday when the Pirates took on the Cubs. To the amazement of onlookers, not only did he wave the Jolly Roger as he walked on water, but he dipped and dove like a dolphin. Or take a look at this, I'm Emily Schmidt. Service dogs make life a little easier for people with disabilities, but some are abusing the service dog name, making it difficult for those who really need the additional help. Ken Pritchett has the details. To call these average dogs may be unfair. Many owners think their dogs are special, but service dogs are uniquely trained, and Elvis the Labradoodle wouldn't make the cut. No, Elvis is too skittish to be a service dog, unfortunately. He's very sweet but weary of people. But Caspin the Black Lab, he fits the bill. He picks up his owner's cell phone, and that's just the start. My dog pulls my wheelchair. He opens doors, both literally and figuratively. You good boy. Good boy. Wallace Brosman says her service dog makes her independent. She takes him to restaurants, but sometimes she's wrongfully denied. I say, well, this is a, a service dog that helps my disability. And they'll say, it doesn't matter. The last dog we had in here wasn't well behaved. Wallace says a growing problem is people passing off their pets as service animals to gain access to restaurants and more. And all it takes is an online search and a few bucks. People are going up to the website, plunking down $50, $250, and getting a backpack or a vest that says service dog. Corey Hudson is CEO of Canine Companions for Independence in San Rafael, which puts dogs through intensive training. He says dogs that are not trained can attack real service dogs, endangering their disabled owners. A Tennessee businessman has a message for young African-American men. Pull up your pants. Insurance agent Fred Davis shelled out $6,000 for this billboard. It says, show your mind, not your behind. Davis believes men who suck their pants portray an image of crime and poor education. Davis is also a civil rights activist who marched alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He says they fought for future generations to move up a little higher, not for a thuggish mentality. Okay, so I believe that ends our newscast for this evening. Thanks for sharing your evening with us. Have an awesome day.